tell me a little bit about why you felt it was worth your time to join uh, the group today uh, with this discussion about the SHAPE trial and, and other matters. Well, we are a group of like-minded people who are trying to change the status quo and go beyond the conventional way of preventing cardiovascular risk. And um, that includes uh, the, even the latest guidelines by the American Heart Association, which are again playing emphasis on risk factors and again missing out on the important ones like family history and so on. And so we are trying to see if we could uh, actually uh, convince um, the public and the, and the policymakers about um, some other ways of uh, identifying those people who are going to have heart uh, disease events or stroke by some other methods, and in particular, um, we have focused today on uh, coronary calcium scanning and somewhat on uh, plaque imaging by ultrasound. So we feel that that is probably a better way to identify those at risk than what we have been doing over the last uh, many, many years. Um, and just revising those equations does not really do very much um, to the actual risk. So shape trial, you say you have some, uh, some uh, disagreement with some of the discussion. Well, I, I'm concerned about uh, the inclusion of women in the trial. So, for example, any risk equation that has come out, ATP3, ATP4, they do not classify women at high risk. Um, even if you, if you were to take a woman who is on their deathbed dying of uh, coronary disease, and if you actually enter the numbers into a risk calculator, majority of them will still be considered low risk. So obviously the risk calculator therefore I don't think is appropriate. And the trial that we talked about the most today appeared to be, although we're going to finalize it, appeared to be people with a Framingham risk with a full cohort risk of 10% or more. And I feel that that would exclude a lot of women, uh, at least uh, the you know, women in their formative, you know, constructive years between 45 and 65, perhaps we would have women 70 plus who would meet that cut point. So that's my concern. And number two, I'm also concerned that women tend to form calcium later on in their plaque. And just by, you know, identifying them as low risk from a coronary calcium score of zero, I'm not sure that that is enough for them. I think there should be another way of identifying their uh, atherosclerosis mm -hmm. burden, and I feel that an ultrasound is a, is a good way to do that. So it's not that you don't think that more needs to be learned and more data needs to be gathered. It's just uh, which data? Right, right, and I, I think I think we have to keep in mind the limitation of funding and what is doable and what's not doable. So keeping all those uh, factors in consideration, I think we came to a good conclusion because um, I think if we can, if we can, I say that you know instead of just treating majority of the U.S. population with statins or U.S. adult population, which is now actually roughly 50 percent, you are definitely going to over treat or unnecessarily treat a lot of them. And you are still going to undertreat some who need to be treated, and you know we are comparing that strategy against this strategy. And then um, uh, what we, uh, you know, we found that this strategy is already being tested in Europe. So um, because it's already been tested, we would obviously like to see their results instead of replicating the data in an expensive form. So what we uh, focused today was can we de-escalate therapy in those people who have high risk. Uh, and but I identified as low risk on the basis of coronary calcium scanning, and that study has not been done because so far the traditional thinking has been if you're high risk, and if you have low risk imaging, you should still continue to be treated as high risk. Well, then why are you doing calcium scanning, right? So, so we t talked about can we de-escalate risk uh, now that we have so much data on um, what does low uh, calcium scanning of zero yeah. really mean in terms of risk. So I think we, based on that we are kind of going to put together and we will collect ultrasound markers and I think we will have some data to hopefully uh, design a separate trial down the line based on ultrasound. Very Which good. as you know is a more yeah. safe test. <laughs>